this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite Premiere Pro plugins and the effects that I use to take my edits to the next level on a daily basis. As we go, I'll show you how you can use even the most utility tools in really creative ways. So be sure to stick around until the end. All right, so let's jump in and start playing around. So the first of my favorite effects is a really fun one and it's called Turbulent Displace. I get asked about this effect all the time and it's one of my absolute favorites. I kind of like this loose vibe, but we can also dial in the amounts, the size and complexity to get everything from a super loose wavy look to something way more tight. Then if I use keyframes on the evolution property at the beginning of this clip and then slide the effect up to let's say 360, you'll see that when we play this back, we now have something really special going on. I use this effect a ton throughout the album campaign for Elazar, both on her logo and also on a ton of footage. On this shot here, I use the effect combined with a mask, making it appear that only this mountain of mess was distorting while Elle remained untouched. It's a really crazy plugin, so just have fun with it and see what kind of happy accidents you can come up with. All right, on to the next one. Lens distortion is another great warping effect, but with a bit more of a symmetrical look. It can be used in a super functional way to help correct or even add a fisheye look. But like always, things can get really interesting when we use keyframes to animate the effect. As you can see, we can use it to create some really stunning transitions between shots here, almost like a hyperspace jump moment. Okay, onto a really riveting one, fast blur. Don't tune me out just yet. I know that's a little bit self-explanatory. You know, this one blurs the image and fast. But I actually use blurs all the time to take the digital edge off of footage and text. Let's take this title, for example. It's great, but watch what happens when we apply just a little touch of fast blur. It just feels like it starts to live in the same world as the footage here. Changed up the color to something a little bit more retro driven and we're feeling even better. We can also use fast blur on footage to create a softer, more bloomy look. Duplicate your clip and apply the effect to the top clip only. Turn up the blurriness and you'll just be affecting that top clip. But when we set the top clip's blending mode to lighten, you can start dialing in this effect to get some really nice soft looks on your footage. You can even select to affect only horizontal or only vertical for even more customization. Finally, you can even use Fast Blur for more advanced applications, like in retouching studio floors or even skin. We can actually remove this pimple from our client's skin right here and make them super happy. In this case, we're gonna use this circle mask on the effect itself to affect only a specific area. And then by increasing the feather of our mask, you can start to see that this is disappearing just like magic. We can apply a position keyframe animation on this effect to have it track along with the problem spot and boom, client happy, OCD destroyed. All right, next up, let's look at a couple color tools. Now, of course we have Lumetri for color grading, but let's rapid fire through two others that I use all the time. Tint defaults as basically just a black and white effect. The cool thing is how you can dial in custom colors to map both black and white to individually. If I change this white to red, we get a pretty cool look. And then we can take it even further and create a two-tone look by mapping the black to a complementary color like blue. Now let's layer this with our next effect called HLS for hue, lightness, and saturation. When we layer these two, we can create sort of a psychedelic effect and even discover some happy accident color schemes along the way. HLS is really great on its own too, letting you create subtle and very flattering hue shifts or terribly unnecessary stoner vibes. All right, our next effect is something that I use a ton to ramp up the energy of a cut. Strobe light is intense and it has to be used in moderation, you know, especially considering people with uh, sort of epileptic sensitivities, but especially in tour visuals, this one is an absolute necessity. It defaults to operate on color, essentially flashing a white frame at the set intervals but change this to make Slayer transparent and you have a great tool for creating stutter edits. Now, for whatever reason, there's a couple sets of numbers that I've found are just the perfect settings for this plugin. So I always dial in the strobe duration to 0.04 and the strobe period to 0.08 and we get a nice speed like this. So let's take this shot and we'll create a cut right towards the end here and apply the strobe light to this end piece only. Then crossfade the two pieces and you have this super interesting transition moment. Perfect for the crescendo of a song or something like that. All right, let's look at luma key, where chroma key is used to key out a specific color, like with a green screen or a blue screen, luma key focuses more specifically on the luminosity of a clip. And this can be a really helpful tool when you're starting to work with overlays. You may be working with an element like this one from my tour visual elements, and you've got it dialed in over a shot using blending modes, but you need to change the color to something a little bit more subtle without losing the pronounced lines. Luma key essentially helps you cut out the black and create an alpha layer without using a blending mode. And then when you apply your tint or other effects, it doesn't get as lost within the shot. 
Okay, Warp Stabilizer is just an absolutely incredible plugin. I've used it a ton to really save my butt in situations where, you know, my handheld movement was a little too rough around the edges, but it even helps polish, you know, really nice, smooth, you know, steady cam or gimbal moves too. This clip just has a little bounce to it. It was shot in a gimbal, but you can kind of feel the ops steps here. Let's throw on Warp Stabilizer and we'll need to analyze the clip before you see the results. But as soon as it's done, you can immediately see a huge difference. Typically, I like to dial the intensity from 50 down to 20 or 30 or something like that so that it feels a little bit more subtle. And I also typically change the setting from subspace warp to position, scale, and rotation. I just find it to be a little bit more natural feeling overall. All right, Lumetri. You know, you've probably used Lumetri a ton for basic color corrections, but here's a couple of my favorite, less well-known tools within this plugin. First is the HLS Secondary tab, which you can use to select specific colors in a clip and edit those on their own. Let's look at this clip where we want to sort of isolate and edit this one color. We can use these knobs here to sort of hone in our selection, and we can use this mask tool to get a better idea of what's being selected. Then we can adjust the hue, saturation, and lightness of that color on its own. This is crazy helpful, especially in settings where you're trying to get, you know, a true white background that just feels a little bit too yellow. And one more thing here, did you know that you can actually create your very own LUT presets and export them out of Lumetri? When you've got your look all dialed in, just make sure the color panel is open on the right side of the screen, go to this tab, and select export cube and you're good to go. All right, rapid fire again for these last two effects. Number 10, we've got time code. And honestly, I just like this one because sometimes time code makes things feel more official. And finally, mosaic. I like using this one to turn footage into sort of blocky motion graphics and also to censor things. I'm just kidding, it's a thumbs up.